In the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, when I posed the question about the impact of black British music, and the center of that is reggae, the response was, what, you guys got black folk in, in England? <laughs> and I had to explain to them the extent to which they've been teeth in our production expertise for decades. And the reality is now that for the first time in New York, they're starting a course which is looking at black British music and at the center of that is reggae. Next month, October, I'm launching the largest ever exhibition on the subject opposite Madame Tussauds. Yeah. We'll be there for one month. Unfortunately, the project had to start with London, I'm trying to move it back 120, 30 miles down the motorway to here, because that's where it starts for me, Hansworth. My revolution was escaping Hansworth in many ways. This year marks 40 years of our first album, Hansworth Revolution. Of 70 years that this SS Empire Windrush docked in Tilbury Docks. And many of our grandparents and parents and relatives came to Great Britain from the Caribbean to rebuild this country after the Second World War. I just want to make it clear that we did not just arrive after 1948. We have been here for over 300 years. May not been in the thousands that we see here today, but we have been here in Birmingham for a long time. For example, and I quote, George Pitt Charry was buried at St. Martin's in the Fields Church on the 10th of February, 1774, and was described as a black bachelor. The first Lord Mayor of Colour actually born in Birmingham. Yeah. 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 There, there is nothing wrong with being born out of Birmingham because of course you can be a born again Brummie. Um, but I'm pleased to be here at the launch of Black History Month. This event means a lot to me because it's a time when Africans, the African diaspora, can celebrate, reflect upon their contributions, not just to Birmingham, not just the UK, but the world.